here. We fucking heat. Damn, they got him. That's a new sign. Trash. Not a single soul. It pops off at night more. Because there's. It's too hot to see. Give this boy a big old hug. Man. So chill, dude. Like, I could have got cut like three million hours ago. Yeah. You got me some wheels? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to take these from you, but I will. I, I brought them for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So sexy. That's your little dog in there, too. Yeah. What's his name? So many days. days. Escaping the sun under this little ramp right here. Right we're, right we're at uh, Flagler Beach Airbus. Skate Park. It's the only yeah, skate park yeah. here. Yeah. This is a young Blake Carpenter grew up. He showed us this park. Well, I'll tell you. I would go to the skate park and watch him, and he was just getting better and better and better. And this was probably about 15. He really started to come into his own. When I was 16 and Blake was like 14, and he was already doing like heel flip feebles down the rail, 14 years old. And uh, he really started, I was like, wow. that Because you watch all the other skaters and they're not doing what he's doing. You're like, you know, you can tell that somebody special what they do. And he was just starting out. I mean, most skateboarders start when they're five, six years old. Blake didn't get started until he was 12, to his defense. So he's got still a long way to go, I feel, to reach his potential. I think he's just starting to reach the point where he can really start taking it to the next level. Obviously, your kids are the greatest day when they're born. It's the greatest day of your life. So, all really I ever wanted was children, and a boy and a girl would be awesome. And Blake came first. Uh, he was born July tenth, nineteen ninety-two. He has his dad's name, which is Rick Blake, and we called him Blake. He was born in Tampa. We lived in uh, South Florida, Cape Coral, for about two years after he was born. And we moved a couple times after that, and then uh, we ended up in Flagler Beach. We lived there from the time he was probably about six and, until he graduated, so he was pretty much raised there. From the time I was five years old, I was involved in sports. Kept me off the streets. I was raised really poor, so I had to, you know, work for everything I got. And I wanted to raise my kids the same way. He was in flag football when he was five and baseball. He had he played soccer, he did everything. We signed him up for this flag football team. I knew right away when I started watching the games that they'd hand him the ball and he'd go 60 yards and nobody would catch him. Uh, when he was like 10 or 11, he won the championship for his whole baseball team. The bases were loaded, Blake came up to bat, and I remember being so nervous and thinking, oh my God, why is all this pressure on my son? Are you kidding me? I was like... I was kind of obsessive about it. I remember taking him out when he was like six years old, putting a full gear on him, catcher's equipment. And he cracked the ball and brought all the bases in. And working with him was like 100 degrees in Florida. I remember him after about 30 minutes, Dad, can we go home? I want to go to the pool. That's kind of what it was like going up. I pushed him really hard. That's around the time when he got his first skateboard, around 11 or so. It was uh, for Christmas. I had always been a skateboarder as a child, and I always enjoyed it and liked it. And um, so I thought, well, you know, let me get this for him so he can kind of do it around the neighborhood and what have you. And I got it. and. 
you are just a whippersnapper. Probably about 12 years old, I remember him coming to me and saying, Dad, I don't want to play baseball anymore. I was like, well, why wouldn't you want to play baseball anymore? He said, I want to skateboard. That was it. He quit baseball, <laughs> football. He was done with it all. It was all about skateboarding. Number seven, five on this huge box. Oh, uh, we're at my old house. I don't live here anymore, but it's still cool to be back. Uh, yeah, I started skating in this driveway for sure. Garage, driveway. That was my jam, always. Looks more boring, way more boring. There'd be like 100 kids outside playing right now. It's probably like the last time I'll ever come back here too. He had been dabbling a little bit with skateboard and I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. But when he said that, I, you know, I got, needless to say, I was very upset. I probably didn't talk to him for a couple weeks. And my wife finally beat it into me that you're not going to make this kid do what he doesn't want to do. So you just need to roll with it and support him. And she was always a sensible one. So, so I flowed with that and, and he was off and running. And, and from the beginning, he was on a mission. He was so passionate about it. And if he wasn't skating, he was watching videos. Uh, that's been the most important thing and skateboarding since he was probably 14. He, he's always had somebody videoing him while he's skateboarding, trying to get that. Damn it! You know, I knew he was just trying to watch and hone in on what these people were doing and perfect his skills. Filming, I guess, because they were like trying to be important or something. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, you know, but that was my thought at the time, you know, and um, I didn't realize then of how important filming is and was, you know, like I do today. Man, gnarly, all right, cool. Yeah. You know, you know who that is, you know who that is? Blake Carpenter? Yeah. You know, my wife would drive him all over the place. Uh, we would go off for the weekends. I would take him and his friends to different towns where they would have competitions and stuff. And we'd fit as many people in my SUVs as we could, and um, I'd take them to the parks. Pretty much just Florida parks, but you know, they were hours away, four and five hours away. I guess we probably didn't like take it really serious until he had probably been doing it for a couple of years. You know, I mean, you can't really think somebody's really into something until they show some longevity at doing it. You know what I mean? And then after a couple of years, we were like, okay. The first time I saw Blake, Billy Marks handed me a VHS tape. And Blake was probably 11 or 12 years old. And he's like, you gotta see this kid, he's from from Florida, and I was like, put it in. Billy put it in, and it was a, ki a little kid skating a plastic bench. And I was like, you fucking kidding me, Bill? Like, what the fuck am I watching right now? And he's like, he's fucking good. And I was like, waiting for something to be good. I mean, he was probably doing some good tricks, but I was like, it's a kid skating a bench. What the fuck am I watching right now? And he's like, I'm telling you, he's good. And then a couple years went by, Blake's tape, new tape surfaced again, and I didn't even, think about what Billy had said, you know, just watched it right there, instantly forgot about it. And then I was like, dude, this kid, this kid's got a good style, he's rad, he won this contest, he lives in Florida, he knows a couple guys that, that I know, and he's, he just seems sick, you know, and I just like the way he skated. And, and then I told Billy, I was like, dude, I, Billy was like, hey, we flowing any new guys or something? And I was like, this kid, I, I don't, you probably don't know him, but uh, this guy, Blake Carpenter, he's from Florida. He's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> he's like, I showed you his tape two years ago and you said he sucked. I'm like, you did? And then I totally remembered and it was like, well, fuck, he's really good now. And then, uh, and it kind of went, went from there. So Billy likes to take credit, which I owe him credit because he did show me the first clips of Blake as a baby, as baby Blake. And then, uh, and then, yeah, and then Blake just kept getting better and better. 
about 15, 16, I knew that, that we had something special and I, and I didn't know that it would happen to the extent it did. I thought, well, you know, he's really good and I wasn't really educated on the skating and what could happen and how it worked and all that. You know, all I did, you know, we supported him. Well, he graduated high school and, you know, me and his mom pretty much sat him down and said, what, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? I mean, what, do you, what are you going to do? disappeared for a while from cinema footage and then the next footage update maybe it was a year later or something or eight months later was like this dude's a fucking pro you know what I mean it was like you could tell he's like this guy has got it you know what I mean so that's when I told him I called him and I was like look man I don't know what you're doing out there but like you might want to get out here because like I see something in you that like I don't even know if you realize that you have and like you should be out here and like let other people see it and try to make something happen. We got college paid for, uh, you're definitely going to get an education and, and then you'll have, he's, well, to be honest, I, I want to go to California. I want to pursue skating, I want to be a professional skateboarder. Like, uh, I know my wife was, you know, pretty flipped out because he was not going to go to college at this point. I was actually probably a little annoyed at the time because, you know, I had never really put a lot of expectations on him other than education and school, and I wanted him to go to school. You know, you got your son moving 3,000 miles away and starting something that you don't even know is going to happen. And so there was a little tension in the family and everything, and um, he was floundering, but um, we ultimately just said, you know, if this is what you want to do, they're not going to come find you here in Flagler Beach. They're not going to knock at your door. Go where people are going to find you, in the little skateboard capital of the world, you know? Go to Cal, go. He called me back and he thought about it and he's like, God, fuck, I don't think Jimmy Johns will let me transfer to California. And I'm like, fuck Jimmy Johns, get the fuck out of here now. And then he went to California and unfortunately he's never been back. <laughs> It was exciting. Uh, it was something like, you know, you look at, you want your kids to be special, but I mean, it's, it's really uh, surreal, like my wife says. I remember the day that he called me, because when, when I sent him out there, the day we, we, we decided he was going out, and I said, well, you're going to go out to California, you're going to sign with Nike, and you're going to be famous. <laughs> he was like, okay, Dad, all right. So the day he called me, because I was always a big Nike fan. I love Nikes, you know? So when he called me the day he called me, he says, Dad, are you sitting down? I said, oh, no, what's wrong? What's wrong? He goes, no, no, just go in your office and sit down. I want to tell you something. I said, okay, all right. So what's going on? And, and uh, he goes, Dad, Nike wants to sign me to a three-year deal. I was like, what? Well, I started screaming, going crazy at work. I remember my workers were coming up, what is going on, what? I was like, my son signed it with Nike. It was crazy, that I went nuts. And it was it was awesome, man. So, uh, <laughs> it was great. He's traveling first class internationally. He's already been to lots of places that I've never been and will never get to go. <laughs> and that's okay, because I, you know, you only want better and more for your kids than what you've had. And so I'm thrilled for him. I am very happy and very proud of him that he proved me wrong. I would want nothing more than him to prove me wrong.